This is Jana Wild and Cat Hawk, and, and together, together we're seeking the middle path. So today on the middle path, we would like to talk about the difficulties of getting married very young. Yeah, when uh, we both grew up Mormon, if you're listening, you should probably know that by now. And uh, that's one thing that we were taught from a very young age is to go through school and find the one and get married right after high school. Or if you go on a mission (laughs) and get married after that. I was going to say, you're supposed uh to go on a mission. So right after the mission. Oh, that's right. Well, I'm a girl. I'm a female. So it wasn't like pushed on me as heavily as it is for men or the boys yeah because you need to have babies so yeah so we and yes and that's another thing like start a family right away uh no matter how much money you have or if you have a home (laughs) just do it just do it yeah the median age um and this is modern so this is in the last let's see 2022 um says the median marriage age for mormons is 22 years old Mm. so that just came out last year um so that's uh that sounds about accurate when i was uh younger so that's been a a little while ago (laughs) almost 20 years um a lot had a lot a lot of classmates that got married at the age of 18 or 19 like right after graduation Yeah, um, I know people who actually got married while they were still in high school. Yeah, there was a few, like that senior year that did that as well. And then some uh, were pregnant uh, senior year, which is, you know, when you are taught to do that, um, everybody's like, oh, good for you. Yay. That's crazy (laughs) to me. Because so I didn't go to high school in the Mormon bubble. (laughs) And I'm just like, (laughs) what? What? Like, that's insane. The idea that that it would be culturally approved of in modern times to get married while still in high school and pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well, now that we're um, nearing our forties and when I see young kids, especially when I go into your neighborhood, which is in Rexburg. And sometimes I'm like, okay, is that their older sister or is that their mom? Because they look like children, this, <laughs> this boy and girl, and then they have a baby and I am saying boy and girl. Cause they look like boy, a little, a boy and a girl. But again, that's what you're taught. There's like this pressure and you should just be happy. <laughs> yeah. My husband, who's a never Mormon <laughs> um, and did not grow up in this culture. We like to play this game because he used to say the same thing. He used to be like, is that that baby's babysitter? <laughs> or is that its mother? He's like, please let it be its babysitter. <laughs> that person looks like a child. Yeah. And so we, yeah, we play that game of is it the babysitter? Or is it the mom? Or is it the sister? Or is it the mom? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I feel like when you're young and well, Disney doesn't help either, but <laughs> growing up watching Disney and then growing up as a Mormon. And just like this, almost it's almost a fantasy that you're just going to find the one. I remember even asking, well, how do you know? Like, how do you know that this is going to be the one, the one that's like this soul that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with and then eternity? Because that's another thing. You go through the temple to spend eternity with. And they're like, you'll just know. And it's almost like this fantasy that you'll just meet and it's just going to be perfect. It's always going to be, you're just going to always be happy and it's going to be beautiful. And it's all lies. There was no teaching about looking for red flags and like abusers and narcissists. And (laughs) just because you're born, it does not mean you're like going to be this really good person. There's like so many things that you do like look out for when you're like seeking a partner 
there's so much grooming of Mm -hmm. the girls in Mormonism and Mm -hmm. this idolizing of marriage, this idolizing of motherhood. And like you said, there's none of this, like, beware of the predators, watch out Mm -hmm. for red flags. Like, how do you know if a man has good intentions? They don't teach any of that. And I think it's because they don't want you to know. I think they, They it's like they're serving you up on a silver platter at 17. Like, yeah. To all these gross men. <laughs> well, I they are. And I and I feel like when you're young, God, you have so many hormones raging through you. I feel like a lot of the times it's like you're going through high school and if you meet someone that you think is the one, it's just lust. Like, how are you supposed to differentiate between the two of someone that you feel like will be a really good partner and equal, someone that you can get through life with? Versus like someone that you're just like, God, I'm so horny. We really want to have sex. Let's get married. Oh, we, what? Two months? Two months is enough dating time. I mean, I think that's good. Let's go get married so we can have sex. <laughs> yeah, I think that there is a lot of that. I think a lot of people are. And I know this because I've talked to a lot of ex-Mormons mm-hmm. um, who are having to come to terms with the fact that they've built this life with a person, the spouse, and they do have some tender feelings for them because of the shared experience but objectively this is never someone they would have chosen to marry if they had not felt pressured and also just wanted to Mm -hmm. have sex yeah well and you know when you're young god you're just you're learning you're growing I I feel like even just now much older I can actually pick out a good healthy partner because I know myself so well because I've done so much work on myself and you know at that age I I was just following what I was taught and then of course the background feelings of lust which turned into love but I just feel like as a 18 year old 19 year old even a 21 year old 22 you're you're still evolving you're still growing you're still developing and I know there are some out there that have found um, a a person that they're with at that age and maybe still with, but it's pretty rare. Well, I don't know. I mean, they might still be together, but are they still happy or Mm -hmm. were they ever happy? Because, and I even hate the word happy. I should say, are they well matched? Yeah. Well, because was it a good fit? Yeah. Because that's another thing is like, you can't, you can't put your happiness on another person. You can't expect a person to make you happy. You have to already be happy. You both have to be happy and then together um, build from that. Well, and yeah, like nobody's happy all the time. And, no. um, you know, relationships, they just go through different stages and phases. But are you well matched? Do you have good communication abilities? You know, do you have enough overlap in what you enjoy doing that you Mm -hmm. enjoy doing things together. Do you enjoy being around them? And (laughs) (laughs) none of that was very heavily emphasized when I was growing up. What I was taught was you both, you need to marry a worthy priesthood holder. You need to go to the temple and you both need to stay active in the church. And that is what makes a successful marriage. Yeah, that's what's going to make you happy. <laughs> I mean, and that is, like I said, the the messaging I got from my mm-hmm. family, too, is that this staying active in the church is what keeps marriages together. Yeah, it's kind of the example you see growing up, mm-hmm. like you said, with your parents. So it, it can be very confusing when you are with someone and you find out they're abusive and you're like, well, I guess I'm just supposed to do this. This is the choice I made. And I remember feeling that way for a long time. I I wasn't happy. Um, I actually married a non-member, but I still had a lot of everything I was taught. You know, I still following those guidelines and I, and I was not active anymore in the church, but I still had those thoughts of what marriage is or being with a partner. And I was always would tell myself, well, this is the choice you made. So you have to do it, even though you're not happy. You you made this choice, and I did that for 17 years. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it makes me really sad. I mean, this idea that one relationship and it's the relationship that you found first <laughs> is supposed yeah. to be the relationship for life and all eternity. 
and that there's anything wrong with saying, you know, maybe not this guy or girl. Maybe not. Or girl. Uh Uh-huh. And maybe this wasn't a good fit. You know, maybe we were 19. Maybe we didn't know ourselves completely yet. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're both allowed to say good luck on your journey and continue growing. They don't give any room for growth. They just... I think that's something that's helped me now as uh, a mature adult (laughs) Um, that's really pulled away from all of the stuff I was taught as a Mormon is the fact that there are beginnings and there's endings and that happens in relationships and it's okay. It is okay. Love someone and still decide that it's not good to be together. Mm -hmm. That is such like an adult mature thing to do. Just be like, you know, I love you, but I don't think this situation is is good for either of us anymore. And so with love, yeah. I say goodbye. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like too, there's almost like this addiction with a partner when you don't have that thought. Like there's this codependency of like the idea that you are meant to be together for eternity and you're all I have and you're all I depend on. And it's for me as a girl growing up with that and a I don't even feel like I was even a woman yet because I wasn't, I was so immature, but I thought I was grown up. I feel like I just fell into the codependency that I was taught as a young warmer girl so easily. Like the man takes care of everything. Those are all his responsibilities. Your only duty is to have kids. Don't even get educated. I mean, you could, but your focus is to be a mother Get married and be a mother. Definitely. They definitely teach codependent patterns in the LDS faith. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you see this even with the fact that you need a savior. Yeah. You are not complete and whole on your own. Like Jesus had to come and die for you. And then within the gender roles, there are some things that women just can't do. You know, we're, we're not supposed to work. We're not supposed to be outside the home. Children need a mother in the home. They need a homemaker and men need to go out and work. And so there is this, I, there isn't a story given to young, to teenagers, young kids in the Mormon faith that is at all positive about one person being on their own. You can only be complete in this narrative, in this culture, if you are in a marriage. Yeah. Well, and even if you end up getting divorced, it's already like pressure of like, you need to get remarried, especially as a woman. (laughs) Get remarried as soon as possible. I almost, Mm -hmm. I almost felt like getting remarried made me, I know it did. It made me somehow more acceptable in my family's eyes. They all pitied me. Um, and felt bad for me as a single mom and yeah it was hard uh but there was definitely this kind of like things aren't things aren't complete over there that that's not okay over there and then as soon as I got remarried even though I married a non-member getting remarried meant now I am complete again (laughs) yeah yeah there is a different treatment I completely um have felt that and been around that too with um my community and or my family it's almost like oh well she's okay now (laughs) yeah she's not one of those rogue women running around (laughs) yeah (laughs) and and it just makes me laugh and I was like I was okay before I mean it was hard being a single mom and it's nice to have some help now but I'm like oh if you guys only really knew the the type of relationship I have with my partner um is very, very independent it's very freeing I I think they um I think that they just imagine this like women need to be controlled or owned or something. I I'm not sure exactly how to explain it because it's cultural. It's not necessarily mm-hmm. spelled out. But yeah. um yeah, a woman needs a man. A woman needs a man in Mormon well, culture. Yeah, they do. And I feel like I and I know this because I felt it as as a young woman, I just felt like I was just stupid. Like I wouldn't know the answers without a man. I wouldn't know how to do things without a man. And, um, and they kind of make you feel that way. It's the way that like the young women to get together, we do crafts and we almost like 
start to fantasize about who our husband's going to be. And we watch the women who's teaching us and they tell us how they met their partner and how they're just so happy. And they have like five to 10 kids and they're just so blessed. And I just remember like looking at them sometimes and like, you look haggard to me. <laughs> and I was like, you actually look really exhausted. And I just, I still remember the moment I made a promise to myself. I, and this was before I knew I wanted to leave the church, but I was like, I'm never doing that. I am never going to look like that. I never want to look haggard, tired, and exhausted. Um, but getting rid of the fantasy of finding the one has taken a long time. It's taken a while to figure that one out. Yeah. And it's just this cultural pressure to get married young and have children young too. And I mean, that's especially in the Mormon bubble. Mm -hmm. It's not as bad in other places, but even so there is an average among active members that 22, 22 years old is the age. And I had a sister that didn't get married until she was in her thirties. And I just remem remember how much crap she got about it. It was like, mm -hmm. she never said anything. She never brought it up, obviously, but other people always were bringing it up. And Oh, always. It's yeah. It's just like, oh, well, you know, maybe maybe some women just never find anyone kind of. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, guys, come on. <laughs> yeah, there's other things you can do besides being married to someone. Yeah, and it's almost seen as weird if you graduate from college and you're still not married. Yeah, I have a, a cousin kind of goes through the same thing. Never been married, but it's always like every time I'm around his mother, it's like, oh, I just wish he could find someone. I just wish he'd get married. And I'm like, well, maybe he's happy. <laughs> Have you thought about that? Like, well, that's the whole problem is it's not about finding a good fit. It's just about finding someone. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone. You're, you can't be alone. It's not yeah. allowed. Not allowed. And then ha start having babies right away. And start having babies. Yeah, I have this quote. And this was the prophet of the LDS church until 1994, Ezra Taft Benson. Do not use the reasoning of the world, such as we'll wait until we can better afford having children, until we are more secure, until John has completed his education, until he has a better paying job, until we have a larger home, until we have obtained a few conveniences, and on and on. This is the reasoning of the world, and is not pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And I remember that same kind of, um, I mean, he's talking about having children there, but that same line of reasoning was put towards waiting to get married. Like you should not wait to get married. No, and well. Combine that with hormones and wanting to have sex and people get married yeah. like right away. Well, yeah, because we're taught that um, in the Mormon uh, church faith that you, you're not supposed to have sex before marriage. And then, um, yeah, they're okay with you just dating for life. Like maybe two or three months. It's very normal to date for like two to six months and then be getting married. It's not abnormal. <laughs> yeah, it's not seen as weird or even seen as fast. If anything, it's seen mm -hmm. as odd to wait too long and people get concerned that you might not be chaste and be able to get married in the temple if you wait too long. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate because there's no way I would have married my ex if I had been given any kind of like breathing room. <laughs> um I let's see we started dating probably just like actually regularly dating in January he said I love you on Valentine's Day and referenced marriage I think it I think mm -hmm. the line was I love you and I've never said that to anyone else before and I don't plan on ever saying it to anyone else again <laughs> yeah which was total bullshit because yeah. I know he did say it to other girls. Um, and so that then we officially became engaged, like came told our parents, like I think in March or something, and we were married by August. And waiting wow. until August was seen as a little bit long. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. this was someone I hadn't even known for a whole year. It's someone I had never lived with, and it's someone that I had only ever been on like dates with, like we never had extended time together because we might be tempted to have yeah, sex. It, yeah. It kind of gives you, it kind of gives the the guys this really short window to be on their best behavior until they have you. And, and I guess you could say the girls like too. Themselves. 
and the girls too. And then you really, your true like colors come out and then you're usually like pregnant right away. So then you have like that. I feel like that's another thing that the church teaches is like have kids right away. Cause it's harder to get out once you're having kids. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, the church has it set up very smartly where you are raised in this Mormon household, very indoctrinated. You go on a mission at 18 straight out of high school. You get back from your mission and your priority number one is supposed to be to get married. And so then you get married almost as soon as you're back from your mission um, and you start having kids right away because as the quote said, don't wait to have kids. (laughs) <laughs> and what you hit 30 before you're even exposed to anything that's not in the thought bubble of Mormonism. Mm-hmm. And by the time you're exposed to any of that, you have children, you have a marriage, you have this whole life deeply mm-hmm. entrenched in you staying active. It's very much a trap. Like getting married young is very much part of the trap. It is. And it's really hard to like go through a divorce with all of that. And I'm sure there's like student loan debts. A lot of the um, missionaries come back and their goal is to go to BYU because that's where they want to meet their significant other. It's a good place to meet a wife. Yeah, it is. And then usually the guy stays going to school while the girl is pregnant or having the kids, like two, three, four kids, right? One after the other. It's like the girl usually gives up her career, her dreams. And then, so then you have the woman you know, doesn't have other options necessarily because she might not have finished school. She Mm -hmm. might not have any like real world job experience. And so if, if her husband is abusive or scary, or if it's at all an unhealthy situation, and then she's had seven children, (laughs) she's totally stuck. Yeah. You're stuck. I mean, that was my situation with my parents. So you just double down, I guess, mm -hmm, right? Like double down, try harder to be a better Mormon. And yeah, just getting married young, having kids young, it's all part of the trap. It is. So it's just a really ugly cycle. But um, we I actually, get- I actually was reading something interesting the other day about disempowering women. Uh, this idea of getting women to have a lot of children and doing it from a young age. Um, oh, yeah. I think it, you told me about that. Yeah, that's something that is just in Christian culture and is a very prevalent part of the uh, war against women that Mm -hmm. was going on during the middle ages and it's this idea that your only purpose is to have children and do it as much and as often as possible because if a woman is having children even against her will sometimes Mm -hmm. um because who cares about rape (laughs) especially (laughs) if he's your husband he can do whatever he wants um then she's not just going to let those children starve And yeah, so, and, and we say rape because this is common. This is common in um, these faiths, these religions, like in marriage. And you feel like because you married young, you have the kids, you're not taught anything about sex or rape um, because it is your husband. It's you just you you deal with it. You think it's OK. You think my body belongs to him. And so. Yep. It's unfortunate. And then, yeah, just like you said, they teach you to have kids young, that that's your entire goal and purpose and fulfillment in life. And you never get to discover who you are, who you are before all this. If you, you don't have choices. Well, and that's for women and for men, they have, Mm -hmm. you know, potentially six plus kids that they are the sole provider for. And so Mm -hmm. they are afraid to leave and walk away because what's going to, who's going to take care, like who's going to financially provide for all these children. Um, The woman is not equipped to do that. Uh, She probably doesn't have a career or education. And so he's just got to figure out how to make enough money to -hmm. feed all these mouths. Yeah. And right now, as the economy is going, nothing's getting cheaper. So what a heavy burden for um, the men to carry on their shoulders. And a lot of times they're when they're starting the families they are still going to school, still getting educated and they don't even have um, like that foundation yet. I know that domestic, everything- domestic violence is a huge problem in Rexburg because people are getting married so young and the police are kind of dismissive of it. They're like, Oh, it's just, you know, high stress situations. It's just these young kids (laughs) who are 20 years old and have a baby 
and are going to school full time. Um, and so it becomes violent, the stress, like the man trying yeah. to provide and, and the fact that they're immature too, like they just are not fully developed mentally yet. <laughs> no mentally and emotionally that this is like when you should be like learning about those parts of yourself that's why you're dating and you're like when you're dating a few different people through your young age it teaches you a lot about yourself it's in an exploration and it helps you find the right partner for you yeah i i remember feeling i know i'm not alone in this because so many ex-mormons i've talked to have talked about this Mm-hmm. feeling like I missed out. Yeah. Um, I never had a college experience. Mm-hmm. I never had a young adult experience, like, like traditional young adulthood. And not to say that it's all perfect, this idea of going off to college and getting hammered and having a bunch of indiscriminate sex or whatever, but just this idea of, of freedom and not having responsibilities mm-hmm. yet. And your only job right now is to, you know, get your education and figure out who you are. You figure out what you want to do with your life. You figure out the kind of people you want to date, if you want to get married, if you want to have kids, like that's what your twenties is supposed to be all about. But instead for me, it was, I had three kids and an abusive husband and we were living in poverty. And that was what my whole young adulthood was. Yeah. But you know, you were doing what you were taught and told. So they were all applauding you. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I'd get on Facebook and see my old high school because I grew up not in the bubble and see them all. Yeah, they were going out partying. They were hanging out with their friends. They were traveling. You know, they're going on cruises. They And I'm like sitting at home with like two toddlers and poop on the floor somewhere and someone needing a sippy cup somewhere and laundry needing to be done. And I don't even have money to buy groceries. And yeah. Just, well, that must have been really hard for you because you didn't grow up in the Mormon bubble. So it wasn't as normalized as it is here. Like here where it's ve- almost everyone is Mormon. It's it's almost abnormal for you to want to go out and like party and do those things and explore and travel. I don't know if it was so much that I wanted to go party. It was just that I felt like isolated. And mm-hmm. I think I felt... Um, like I should be happier than I was yeah. like, I, like trying to create. And I, I think a lot of people do this where they try to create a narrative that even though what they're doing looks less fun, mm-hmm. it's somehow better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so it was this idea of like, well, I'm still going to be young when my kids are out of the house, you know, and I tell myself, oh, I've heard like that, that one a lot. <laughs> you know, I still get to, I'll be I'll only be 40 when my son goes to college, you know, I'll, I'll, um, still have like a lot of life ahead of me when my kids are grown up or I had kids young. So my body bounced back better. And like, I would tell myself these things, but really I was probably, I, I, I was super depressed. (laughs) No one teaches you as a woman, actually how hard it is to be a mother, to have a baby, to have a pregnancy and then to have another one and then another one. And I think there's a lot of depression and postpartum depression that happens. And then again, still, you're supposed to seem so happy on the outside because you're doing everything right. But truly, when you go back home, they're not happy. They're they're And they don't know why. But they won't. I think very few talk about it. I think you and I are talking about it because we are we've really learned to use our voice and that it's okay to start communicating and talking about these things but i feel like a lot of them live in just sadness and um they're trying to be happy because they were told that this is like the happiest time in their life but really it's really really difficult yeah there's a lot of of it's just what humans do we try to justify our decisions Mm -hmm. because we don't want to admit yeah yeah and of course you love your children, but it's, it's that trap. It's that mm-hmm. you have the children and of course you love them and want to take care of them, but then you don't have time or energy for yeah. furthering your goals and ambitions in life. And that applies, especially to women because they stay at home, but it applies to men too, because I mean, how many LDS men make their career decisions based on, I just need to be able to provide for eight children. 
you know, <laughs> like, and I'm going to be the yeah. only income versus what lights me up? What makes me excited? Mm-hmm. What do I want my contribution to this world to be? No, it's got to be like, I got to be a dentist. <laughs> yeah. I, and yeah. And they're not, yeah, they're not fulfilling, fulfilled in that way. And that's where they spend most of their time and their life is like in their work. Yeah. So there's like just these two like people coming together who you think it should be just like perfect and happy, but really they both have like the things that are weighing them down, making them unhappy, you have all these children just like running around and it's, it's fake. It's a pretend, but I feel like most of them, I feel like you don't know you're unhappy until you've actually became happy. You don't know you're living in it until you've actually came out of it. Well, happiness isn't even an option. That's not even on the menu. Like fulfillment, Mm -hmm. personal goals, you know, you matter as an individual, like that's not on Mm -hmm. the menu. And so they're looking at the other things they have to choose from. And they're saying, this is a good choice. I'm glad I made this choice. This is like the best that I could have done with the Mormon menu that was handed to me. And Mm -hmm. um, it's not usually until they leave Mormonism and they start to realize that there's other possibilities that that a sense of loss and depression really sets in of how many choices they made, how many times they betrayed themselves. And now like so much time has been lost. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And so, yeah, getting married young is not good. (laughs) In conclusion, in conclusion, (laughs) just wait. But I also feel like i I think back when I was 18, 19, 20, and I felt pretty grown up and I felt like I knew it all and I knew what I wanted. So (laughs) I think I just would really encourage living together um, Mm -hmm. and, and exploring yourself and like giving yourself time to find out who you want to be. I think that would be my advice um, to my children. And luckily they have a very, um, luckily, unluckily, a very Uh brutal example uh, of my marriage (laughs) with their father. And so I think that I won't have to tell them too much the importance of getting to know a person. Yeah. (laughs) Committing. (laughs) Yeah. Because they've seen what happens. Yeah. I think the, um, the advice of like, it is okay to live together first and it's normal to have your first love and it's normal for that love to um, not be forever, not be forever to fade out and that you don't have to be with like this one person for the rest of your life. Like don't have that heavy burden on you. It's, this could just be whatever it is right now and go with it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that would be my advice. I think when it comes to marriage and, um, what we tell our children and just getting married young, Divorce rates are much, much higher if you get married under 25. There's just still so much self-exploration that needs to happen. Yeah, you're still growing. You're still developing. You're still learning who you are. So give yourself time. Give yourself time. And then also, (laughs) you're allowed to change your mind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to last forever. You're allowed to end relationships. Yep. I I like that um, phasing out of the fantasy and learning what's really real and that it is okay to walk away. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today at The Middle Path. You can find out more about Kat and Jana at thewildbliss.com and Facebook dot com slash the wild bliss.